Hello and welcome to the second run on day one here in Vesonas in Switzerland. This is the World Parrot Alpine Skiing World Cup 2018. At Parrot Alpine, right in the middle of your screen, that's what you need if you want to follow us on social media. You can have all the exclusive content, interviews, highlights, even a Meet the Mountain project that we're going through with every different venue. So uh, at Parrot Alpine, follow us. But for now, get ready, get settled. Run two of day one. The giant slalom is about to take place. It's warmed up a little bit. Only a little. It was about minus seven this morning. It's now around about minus four. Still cool. I can tell you that. Good snow conditions for the skiers. Uh, very minimal athletes failing to finish this morning. The skiers much preferring the conditions here underfoot or under ski at least. The uh, Piste de uh, course, starting altitude some 2,090 metres above sea level. A vertical drop of 270 metres. It's a quick course, set out by Mandler Daniela. So as uh, people look on, Getting ready. Film crews, press. All he gather here. Starting to take note of the athletes that might be competing for those Pyeongchang gold, silver and bronze medals. It'll be the vision impaired women's event up first. Run two sees the last athlete out of the start gate this morning. Out first, Daniel Umstead and Rob Umstead will go at the beginning. Kelly Gallagher, Millie Knight. Elena Sana, Noemi Eva Ristau, Melissa Perrine, Mena Fitzpatrick, and Henrietta Fakasova. That is the lineup. Uh, course being watched. Athletes being watched. The skiing here in Resonas being watched by you and a big welcome to all of you wherever you are in the world I had a quick chat with uh, a few of the athletes in between the uh, runs this afternoon quite nice to, uh, to speak to Johan Tabule and Tyler Walker and uh, in fact some of the athletes have been able to quote things I've said which means they're listening which is great and uh, it means that they're uh, enjoying the coverage of their sport. It's all about them and the coaching staff and the teams that are involved. And it's exactly what these live streams have been all about. A few last moment repairs to some of the gates. But the idea of live streaming all of the World Cup dates is to bring this wonderful sport into the living rooms or palm of your hand if you watch it on your phone maybe of people that perhaps wouldn't watch it all year round maybe you've seen it at winter games the athletes don't just turn up for the big occasions the, the world cup circuit european cup circuit plenty of opportunity for these guys to race but now they have the opportunity to do so with cameras pointing at them Great replays, and we hope you've been enjoying the coverage of the 2008 Para-Alpine World Cup. It's a rather large plane going uh, overhead. It's uh, causing some noise down in the, the valleys. Of course here, it's on the edge of what they call the, the four valleys, or four valleys. Uh, say it like a local. British coaching staff looking on. The uh, Britain team, like uh, a few of the other teams, deciding to miss the first couple of legs here in uh, Bessonas, they've rejoined us, having missed out on 
maybe Kranska Gorda or Zagreb. But many of the athletes rejoining us here in Switzerland with uh, just team to go in uh, in January. And it's everybody over to Canada. The World Cup final in Canada. Let's see, there's uh, a slight delay here. We haven't had the, the forerunners just yet, so uh, some last minute repairs being dealt with. It was quite a short gap between the finish of the last race and uh, the start or scheduled start this afternoon. Maybe just a few repairs that need doing haven't yet been looked at. See the team just working on one specific area of the course. And if they can uh, get that sorted, I'm sure we'll be underway. One of the Japanese coaches joining in with the effort, as well as the Canadian and Italian. There you go. It's all about the camaraderie. Everybody working together to try and get the event back on track and up and running again. So as I say, thank you for joining us. Slight delay to the scheduled start time this afternoon, we were meant to be going a couple of moments ago, but uh, we were just being held for some course maintenance. Once that is complete, I'm sure the uh, people in charge will get us underway quite merrily here in day one. Beautiful venue, absolutely stunning, a, a place that Gets around about 300 days worth of sunshine every year. That might be cold sunshine, mind you, but uh, certainly the sun gives you a, a feel-good factor, doesn't it? So we'll take a look back at the results from the first runs. Mali Brochet very much in charge of the standing events. Uh, Claudia Lowe, she's definitely not part of that. Andre Rostus was in second. Claudia is the leader of the sitting event. So, uh, Rostus, Ramsey, and uh, Annalena Forster in the mix. Apologies there, the uh, graphic mixing the standing and sitting athletes together. So, Mary Boucher, definitely in charge of the standing event. Women's sitting event, Loesch, Forster, Schaffel, Huber. being done here. Interesting to see whether that's been passed on by maybe some of the skiers on their course inspection. This man just demonstrating how to look cool here in Vesona. So he's done it quite well there. Great beard, great moustache, cool sunglasses. There's no saying you can't go skiing in style. So, uh, 
vision impaired event for the men. As uh, Patrick Jensen coming out of the start gate first. Count for uh, performances from the Slovakian teams again. The uh, Slovakian pairings have been doing well. Mike Marku is the man to beat, though. Again, another of those that took a bit of time off at the beginning of this year from the circuit. We were uh, training elsewhere. But they are back. Men's standing event. And this is another one that's going to be very interesting. Theo Jimmer and Marcus Salka. The best of the two times. Not a great deal separating them. But then a little bit further back, Thomas Field as well don't forget with uh, some events we have the fastest athletes in the middle and uh, so the action must be getting close because these are the four runners making their way down the run and onto the pitch comes our first four runner give you an opportunity to take a look at parts of the course that's the moment they come past our commentary box window it's the first of the, the drop downs it levels off they drop down again in this section here try and maintain as much speed as they can through this section a sharp left hander as you see our forerunner just having a problem with it and then they start to think about the drop down which comes just here just got to come from left to right through the final gate and then through the finish line yeah, forerunner breathes a sigh of relief ready to make a start so, uh, matter of seconds away women's vision impaired he's underway run number two bib number eight belongs to Daniel Umstead. Can she cause a problem for those in front of her with a time with husband Rob as guide? said earlier if you can't have complete trust in your husband as a VNS gear to take you down a mountain who can you trust well, that's exactly what uh, Danielle Umstead has Only five year old crossing the line at a time of 201.86 Kelly Gallagher should be next up Send out. This 
is Kelly. I mentioned earlier, not uh, in the initial selection for Great Britain squad that will definitely be going to Pyong Chang, but the experienced 32 year old knows there are some other slots that might be given to her, meaning she would be going to a third winter game. She's inside Homestead's time, the uh, pink gum shield on show. Now this was Millie Knight making her way out of the gate. Knight will want a little better from her performance in the early stages of the World Cup. Such a tremendous world champion, the first GB athlete to do so. But while taking her down, often known to wear his uh, kilt, his Brett. And uh, through the line they come. The shadow, good job at the end. We'll try and bring you some times as we go along. Gallagher's time, 159.93. This is Ellen Asana. Added by sister. <laughs> Chloe at the front giving those instructions. Using that microphone in in front of the protective helmet. And sister Eleanor able to listen in. And talk back if they need to. And uh, the two of them chatting away after completing their run. Really night time, by the way, is uh, two minutes point eight nine. She's actually dropped in behind Kelly Gallagher. So good run from Gallagher. This is uh, Noemi Eva Risto. Gallagher still leads. Star will look to improve on her time from the morning. Through the line, 153-10, well and truly in front for now. Noemi goes in front of Elena Sana. Melissa Perrine. Melissa. Guide. That's Christine Geiger. Having had some success on this World Cup circuit already, would like to add another podium. Yet to medal at a Paralympics. Can she do so this time around? 153-01. They certainly fancy her to get a medal to the Australians. She's top of the board at the moment. 153-01. Mena Fitzpatrick. He just seems to be getting quicker and quicker, the young Brit. Guided by 
Jennifer Keogh, Jen. Again, I talked this morning about differences in styles, the distances perhaps between the guide and the athlete themselves. Oh, Meno and Jen, pretty close. Will they be close in around about six seconds time? 153.01. Nice, 1.5, 1 1.58. Mena Fitzpatrick leads, 1.43 seconds. And the 19-year-old celebrates with guide Keo. And now the dynamic duo. Kasova and Subatova. Subatova, the guide. Natalia's job to keep Henrietta Fakasova at the top of the World Cup, not just guiding them down. And these two work so well together, but we have seen Fakasova take a few spills in this World Cup. And as she comes to the line, 149.46. Well, you can hear people applauding at the bottom. It's another tremendous run and performance from this pair. And, well, the Slovakian team must be rubbing their hands at the moment. They have got some real talent in Paris skiing. None more so than Hendrieta Fakasova. <laughs> So that's one event done already, women's standing event to come. This is Ursula Marimont, number 14. Thirty-three year old from Palma de Mallorca. Right leg amputee after an involvement in a traffic accident. She's represented Spain at both the 2010 and 2014 games. Will she go on to represent them again in 2018? Well, Marimont comes down and finishes her second run of the day. As I said, the skiers have been enjoying the conditions here. Uh, very few DNFs this morning uh, did not finish. If you're wondering what that means, did not finish or did not start. I had the opportunity of talking to Tyler Walker earlier, who was uh, one of, I think, the only one that didn't start this morning. And DNS and DNF, for those unfamiliar with the terms. Melanie Schwartz from the United States of America. As we mentioned before, not always been the case. Former athlete for Canada, born in Toronto. Uh, Swartz crosses the line, 155 in front of Marimont. So, uh, Gorosheva crosses the line. Oh, she's uh, a little bit slower than Swartz. That's interesting. From this morning's time, she was ahead. She's obviously dropped some time on the course through her descent down this course. Corradini, all full of smiles this afternoon when then, uh, she came back up from her training run. She was talking to one of the Korean coaches, uh, 
very Scottish gentleman called Hammy. So, big smile on Corradini's face. And, uh, she has a very, very good history within this sport. Medalled in 2010. Only finished one race in 2014. She's very much inside the time from Schwarz. 201.51 for Melania Corradini. It's nearly the smile, isn't it? It's nearly there. Melania Corradini, Italia. So, Anna Jochumsen next up Jochumsen again one of the single leg skiers that we have here as part of the circuit using those outriggers okay, if you knew the outrigger is the piece of equipment that uh, Anna is holding in her right and left arm opposed to the conventional ski pole some of the one leg skiers use these just to give them a little bit of extra guidance and extra stability where they need it. Talked to one of the mono skiers and he was talking about the fact that you don't push too hard on them in case they slide away from you and your top half slips away. You're already busy concentrating on moving your bottom half and keeping the blade nice and smooth through the course Jokumsum drops time doesn't catch Corradini Jokumsum doesn't change Erin Latimer et près d'un portillon, nous avons Maria Papoulova, de son numéro 21. Erin Latimer. Voilà le 200 numéro 13, Erin Latimer, Canada, est à l'arrivée. Papulova now. Papulova has been putting in some decent performances where needed all of that she went 57 66 earlier Through the line she comes. Oh, she's behind. Well, Latimer keeps the lead. So, uh, Papulova, just a little slip up there. There in Latimer. He wasn't far behind Papulova, but there's about a second that's been clawed back. Oh, Stephanie Jallen, Steph Jallen. Jalen, 57-41 in the first run. Can she get past the Canadian Erin Latimer in this second run? Jalen tucks in. Oh, yes, she can. 0.53. The difference. Single arm skier. Meilleur temps actuellement pour Stéphanie Yallen. Best time to Stéphanie Yallen of OSP. Nous sommes en train de faire un 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 train de faire un
Old Stokes Arm number. On five, the Big Max Matilda. That's the old graphic from the last athlete. This on is uh, Anna Maria Rida. Bib number 11. So Rida coming down. We'll look at the time for Rida then as she comes in to cross the line. And she leads 157.58 for Anna Maria Rida. After Rida is uh, Petra Smazova. Bib 19, Smazova. Heading down. Okay, just the use of the right ski pole. Into the drop. Oh, good. 157.18. Smazova goes to the top of the leaderboard. Molly Jepsen. Jepsen change complexion of the leaderboard. Due to her impairment, Molly's left arm hangs quite low on the body, unable to sort of lift it and use that as balance. So this is a, a different skill for a different impairment. The 18-year-old from Whistler wants 157.18 into the final drop. 157 should be achievable. Very much so. 0.48. The gap now each time. Getting quite regimented. Around about half a second these ladies are taking from each other. Next up, Barbara Vranchikina. 15 year old surprise package from Kranskagora. Oh, I thought she was going to go there. Big puff of snow all over the place. And uh, as she dropped down into that turn, it was uh, conceivable that we wouldn't see her again. But she's here. Collected herself. Turns for home. Not long to go here. 156.70. Easy. 2.64 seconds for Ronchikina. Has smashed her second run. Well, Veronchikina has absolutely destroyed the bottom half of that run. I thought she was having a problem. Very much not. Oh, points are very much up for grabs in this World Cup. Boshe bossing it with 380. The giant slalom so far. Ronchakina up to 180. And, uh, I have to say, she's just put in one heck of a performance. Ramsey now. Coming to the line. Outside. That's how good Veron Chikina's time is. 8.6. Nearly an entire second that Veron Chikina has managed to get in front and keep. Well, there was over four tenths of a second the difference between Ramsey and Veron Chikina this morning. Now Rothfuss. Veron Chikina will finish on the podium. Andre Rothfuss. One of the last two athletes here that really can affect the time. Kratter and Hondo will go last in the run, but their times this morning, well outside a minute, 
Rothfuss. Again, just the use of the one pole in the right hand, a 28 year old. From Hennen in Remstra. Into the final drop, 154 to get past the 15 year old. Yes, just seven one hundredths of a second from Rothfuss. The 2014 slalom champion comes up with the goods, but is it enough to stop this lady? She's won seven from eight World Cup events so far. Can Marie Boucher make it eight from nine? Or is that run from Rothfuss quick enough to take it? Boucher destroying gates as she goes through them. Scant regard. As long as your ski is the right side of it, you can get as close as you like. And you see Boucher tucking in. Oh, easy. 151.91. This lady is sensational. What can you say? Well, even she doesn't know what to say. It's another tremendous performance from Boucher. Elena Krater now. Bid number 24 for Krater. Oh, having to follow Boucher. Never mind, chase her time. Krater, 21. I'm sure we'll be enjoying the uh, chance to race on home territory. She uh, was originally born in St. Gallen. Krata, up to 15 seconds back, but as I said, the, the last two runners in this event not expected to uh, trouble our leader, Mani Boucher. This is Ami Hondo. Uh, 20 years of age, still a student, still very much learning off the slopes and still very much learning on them as well. Time for Ami this morning, 102.12. And Ami crosses the line some 16.32 seconds back. From Mary Boucher. So it is the French lady who continues to dominate the standing event, despite the fact that we added lots more talent to the roster here in Vesones. She still managed to hold them off. Uh, well, Ali Boschet and Stephen Jameson have got to know each other quite well over the last couple of weeks. They're going to have a chat. Yeah, thank you very much, Marie. Congratulations, winner again. I take it you enjoyed this place a little bit more than Kranska Gora just at this point. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, better than in Kranska Gora. It's it was a good slope with a very good condition, uh, winter condition and not spring. So, so it was nice and I take so much fun on this slope today. I'm happy with my result and let's go. <laughs> and are you looking forward to the next three days as well? I know you've got slalom coming up as well, bit of a change in the weather maybe tomorrow and Wednesday as well. Could be interesting. I cross finger for the weather. <laughs> um, yeah, normally it's snowing, I think. So 
We will see. It's a ski. It's an outdoor sport, so <laughs> we need to to make with it, and we will see. We well, wish you all the best, and congratulations again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marie, and back to you, Alan. Awesome. Thank you. you Marie Bochet. It might ski. It's an outdoor sport. It might snow. She said. Well, shock, shock news. Yeah, you're right. It might snow. Uh, weather is something that uh, these guys and girls have to just deal with. And uh, I'm sure that each of them takes every day as it comes because who knows who can predict what it will be like when they get to Korea, when they get to Pyeongchang, what the conditions will be like. You can't bank on a lovely sunny course with beautiful conditions, not only the snow but the slope. No rain, maybe. Not too cold, not too warm. There are no perfect conditions, pretty much. Because you can't hold out for them. You have to deal with what's in front of you. This is uh, Maya uh, Bidalt, who uh, had a real unlucky start to this morning's first run. She got an outrigger caught in the post. But uh, holds the timing equipment as she left the start gate. Oh, uh, a very much an unfortunate accident. But uh, Vidal, very much in the learning curve of her career as a sit skier, and across the line she comes. Oh, and has taken a tumble after the line. And she's uh, trying to push herself up, so that would indicate that she's uh, not injured. But uh, just unfortunate to go down after the line. Sticks her tongue out. There's a little smile trying to appear there. Uh, you have to have a sense of humour. At some point in life, you are going to hit the snow. This lady will tell you that. She's hit the heights and the lows, and it's one of the lows. This time out for Stephanie Victor. Well, she will tell you she's been on top of a podium and took gold at the biggest of the events there is for a para skier. But sometimes the rough is harder to take than the smooth any time. Sometimes just not your day. Here, Yala just, the back end just skidding out. And she's facing the wrong way to be able to just kind of get going again. So, uh, Stephanie Victor, sorry. Uh, it's not the perfect ending for her on day one in her new home nation. I'm sure, having chatted and met Stephanie Victor in recent times, the one thing she wants to do here in the homeland of her husband is put in some good performances for the locals and for, for her new nation. She'll be gutted with that. Ruth Haxbill, another that took a bit of a break at the beginning of 2018. Heading down and through the gate in 202.45. So, uh, Axbill 46 seconds clear of uh, Maya Vidal, as to be expected. Now, Tory Pendergast. This is a lady that uh, very much delivers her performances from the Mitch Gawley book of skiing. It's uh, it's all or nothing, and it's uh, about getting the right level between the two. Tori really throws herself where she can, and it's learning where you can go as fast as you can without coming a cropper, and she's going to go inside Hacksfield's time. By 3.44 seconds. Oh, uh, this is the Barbara Van Bergen. Uh, 
39 years old, Barbara Van Bergen. Of, uh, two Dutch. All those skiers they have in the women's section, and there's a few lads as well. Van Bergen driving down. Time. will be outside of Pendergast, 136. I told you the Tory was quick there. It looked quick, it felt quick. And, uh, oh, Tory Pendergast. Not sure that's not a little bit of a, can't tell that's a bit of snow, or just some wind blowing some in that direction. Uh, Stevens. Trying to chase down the Australians' time. 159.01. Inside two minutes is an absolute must. And it's going to be. 157.90 for Stevens. 111 inside of Pendergast. So uh, Stevens will go to the leader box and wait there for a moment. Linda Van Impelen up next. Van Impelen, the lady that won the last event in Kanskagura. 32 year old, now lives in uh, Ermst. I already took up Paris skiing in 2010. And Pellet heading into Winter Games year. With some half decent form here. She's going to go in front as well. 156.69. So more good performances from Van Impelen. This is uh, Mamoka Muraoka. Japan's hope for a Sitski medal in the women's section. He's very much Muraoka. Twenty year old from Saitama. One of the youngest in the event. Certainly shows her bravery. No fear attitude. Saw her put in some great performances in Katai and then during a first run and then in a second run. Ending up finishing fourth from first. It was a heartbreak for her on that occasion. She's behind Van Impelen here. Well, that's a surprise. Well, over four tenths of a second, the difference between Muraoka and Van Impelen and Van Impelen now just needs a mistake from one of the last three and she will podium. Schaffelhuber. Always got to play the game and, and try and not slow yourself down too much into those corners. That's the bravery element I was talking about. How far do I push my back end out? Will it slow me down too much? Will it cost me? Schaffelhuber into the final drop down then. 156.69 is achievable. Easy. 298 the difference. Shaffle Huber smashes it. But how much pressure has she put on to Forster and Los? We're about to find out. Annalena Forster. Twenty-two years of age. 
Just took a bit of a bump through that section a moment ago. That's obviously a dangerous corner as well. There's a little area of divots that just take you wide if you catch them wrong. Forster continuing to show us the speed she has done so far in the World Cup. A 153.71 is ebbing away. 155.27. Well, you felt that Schaffelhuber's was quick. Forster hasn't impacted on Schaffelhuber. Here's our World Cup leader. Claudia Los, 153.71. She doesn't know how to give anything other than everything, does Claudia Los. And every now and again, it can end in disaster. Sometimes it's just not your day, but Los was good this morning. It's a Germany 1-2 at the moment. Van Impelen will miss out if Loesch is quicker than 156.69. Loesch looking very good. Just a few seconds ago, 153.71 is what she wants and will get in a 152.96. Claudia Loesch, brilliant again. Well, the Austrian really does take some beating and here on day one in Vesonas nobody had what it took 152.96 Savile Huber 153.71 and uh, Stephanie Victor will uh, dust herself off find that smile of hers and get back on tomorrow in front of her ho new home nation so it's Loesch who wins yet another giant slalom world cup and that is the end of the women's events for day number one they've just flown by haven't they men's vi next vision impaired athletes kubatska our b1 skier having a very good go at trying to win three races in a row he won both of the events in kranska gora but that man there mac marku is just the type of guy that can stop you. What a skier he is. He and Jack Leach's guide have got some competition to come though. To the men's VI competition. Patrick Jensen goes first. Patrick's guide is to his left, to our right as we look at it. That's Lara Fault, the youngster herself. And, uh, these two will only get better the more they ski together, the more Lara understands Patrick, the more Patrick understands Lara. The officials just Waiting, well, the referees and uh, a few observers from the side. There's been a guy outside of my window, been stood watching every single race that started this afternoon, so uh, I'm sure he's here on holiday, but. Uh, Sometimes great sport can stop you in your tracks. And I think uh, maybe he's being inspired by the guys and girls that he's witnessed so far. The guys nearly ready to get started. Again, apologies for the slight delay here. There's the uh, Slovakian pair who won our VI event for Kasova and uh, 
Supertova? I think we're just about ready now to get underway. So away goes Lara Falk. She takes Patrick Jensen with her. And uh, Lara is fairly chatty in the over se opening section. Just hear some of that noise through my headset. Not sure whether that comes through to you or not, but uh, certainly some early doors instructions being given to Patrick. And at the moment, the pair going okay. 58-22. This morning, it was uh, quite a distance back from the rest of the group. And, uh, a couple of seconds already from Mark Batham. So, Patrick, his task will be to close in on the rest of the field. Damir Mizdrak having the same idea, but Mizdrak uh, sliding out, sadly, this morning. So uh, Patrick Jensen and Lara Falk, who will be 20 soon. Jensen himself only 21, so the youngsters coming through. 158.99. Next out will be Mark Batham. Guide, Cade Yamamoto. As I said this morning, potentially the oldest athlete here at 59. One of the things that has always drawn me to Paris sport, no matter what he's, I've commentated on. But, uh, people's age doesn't stop them. And uh, Batham is indeed quicker than the man who's just 21. Uh, time of 157.79 for Batam and Kade Yamamoto. The uh, microphone ending up a bit too close to his face towards the end, but uh, it's soon dealt with that. This is uh, Matej Krezo. Matej is uh, with his guide, Anna Ogazinska. Again, I was talking about this earlier, the uh, difference in what the skiers, certainly the VI skiers, like to do in terms of their coaches or their guides. This is uh, one of these pairings that get quite far separated. Gozinska is already across the line here. And, uh, well, Kressel. 153-4-0. He's well inside. Mark's time. Second of our Americans. And this is Kevin Burton. Former linguist. The US Navy. His guide is uh, Chris Tatsuno. It's not actually it's, uh, registered down here is Brandon Ashby. So apologies to uh, to Brandon. Doing a misservice there. That's what they have on the start sheet. Anyway, Brandon and Kevin. As it come towards the line, he's ahead, 151.65. Lots of cheering at the bottom. And, uh, to congratulate each other. Now, Bruno Murrenford. Second of our over 50s category. There isn't a category, I've just made that up, but there are two over 50s athletes in this event alone. And that Murdenfoot has been podiuming during this World Cup. 
which will delight him. Guide is Christoph Gmeiner. Gmeiner guiding him down nicely. Can hear again, maybe at home, the chat between the two of them. Oh, Murrenfoot just getting his left ski, the right side of that final gate post, just being able to drag it back in. And it's first for now for Gurno. Who's the first of our Slovakians? Uh, Jakub Hrako. Branislav Brosman, the other half of this team. Well, they've won the women's VI event. And one of the three Slovakian teams in the men's event upset Mac Marku. You have to say, Marek Kubatska will be the obvious choice that stands out after that first round, but you never know. Miroslav Javeus and Jakub Krako, both podium contenders the majority of the time, and Krako is well inside Murgenfurt, 3.80. And uh, Murgenfurt's stay in the winner's zone doesn't last long, which he finds the funny side of. This is John Santacana Mestegui. Thirty seven now. Miguel Jalindo Garces is the guide. Striking orange protective goggles for Mestegui. He's going to cross the line in front of Krako. The times are really being stepped up here. 2.27 the difference. Krako smashed open Murrenfurt's time. Now it's Metegui's time to do so. Now here's a man that knows how to move. Miroslav Hreos. Maros Hudik, the guide. These two really seem to move quickly. The factor time for these is only 88.04. So... Uh, Clock runs fairly normally, only slowed very fractionally. And Miroslav Javier throws himself into every course. We've seen him DNF on a numer numerous occasions already in this World Cup series. But Javier doing okay at the moment. He's two approaching the Final drop down here then. This right-hander into a short left and then duck for the line. Whoa, he's outside. 145-38. John Santacana Mestegui was quick. Well, I said he'd really put some time. Mestegui on Krako. He's put time on Jareas as well. Bertagnoli. Gets in front of the Spaniard. He's got a podium finish. Fabrizio Casal, the man out front, giving the instructions to Giacomo. The 18-year-old. Really pushing on bronze, gold and silvers, all from those world championships. And he's outside, 0.73. Well, you can see the disappointment straight away. Well, for the moment, Mestegui's lost his guide, but he's not lost his place on the leaderboard. He is top. He's off for a look around. Now then, Miss Tegui will podium. Marek Kubatska. Blacked out goggles for our Slovakian skier. 
Kvatskis Gaid. Mrje. Zartovitseva. And uh, you'll hear more from this guy. That's because there's a speaker on the back of the backpack. You see the backpack that uh, Maria is wearing? This is a white box at the bottom. And uh, they are the ways that these will communicate. The microphone in front of Maria. And the fact of time here, 59.65. So it's as if the clock runs at nearly half the speed of a normal second. That's kind of the best way to describe it. That's factored in to level this off. 144.63. He's inside. 141.99. He's brought himself to an abrupt halt. You can, you can hear how much the effort has gone in from Maria. And uh, a round of applause from uh, Miss Tegui. That was those two getting underway. Now, it's the Jack and Mac show. As it was uh, labelled to me the other day. Great characters, the pair of them. Mac himself expects in Korea. Certainly, Canada expect him to be somewhere near when it comes to medal times pretty much every day I'd imagine and Mac Mahu has a chance here to pick up some World Cup points he's called it training a little bit earlier on that's a little coy you'll still want to do well in the World Cup Jack taking a little look round the 20-year-old is still there from uh, Sault Ste. Marie. The young Canadian heading down. Across the line. 144.05. Marek Kubatska has done it again. Well, two victories in Kranska Gora and Marek Kubatska has carried on here where he left off in Slovenia. The Slovakian is king of the slopes in the men's VI. That really is a tremendous performance from Kubatska. He's nearly a second behind from this morning well the handshakes all around and hugs as well in fact no, sorry he was, uh, he was quicker than Bertagnoli this morning it was uh, fractions behind Marcou this morning and uh, well Kobatska has done the business not only did he get past Mac Marku, he opened up a very good lead. It was a really good performance in that second run. And he's gone from being 0.3 behind to over two seconds in front. That's very impressive. Into the men's standing event now. No time to stand and chat. Sticking with the action. This is Jordan Brossan, he's first to go, 149.22, that's his combined time, <laughs> he celebrates and waves, he uh, was always bound to be the leader after the first run, wasn't he? Thomas Grucha, who went 52.55, only fractionally quicker than Brossan this morning. It was quite tight in, in large pockets of the standings for this men's event. 
Rucker chasing down on Brossans, 149 22. Well, he's 0.61 in front, so he's opened up a bit more of a gap from this morning. Chomty O'Callaghan next. Australian. Just 20 is John T. Plenty of time to learn all about the sport. He crosses the line 149-11. So he managed to sandwich himself in front of Brossan, but behind Rocha. And uh, John T. Not happy. I think it's easy for us to say. Right. Jumped into second position. Next out. Oh, and maybe sliding out. He has. Oh, Jamie Stanton. It went wrong. And once it's going wrong, even getting off the course has gone wrong for Stanton here. He's managed to get himself trapped between one of the gates. So, uh, when it's not your day, it is not your day. Here, just coming into this left hander, yep, got all caught up in the gate. Well, I'll tell you what, he's done superbly well to be on his skis, Jamie Stanton. In almost Tyler Walker style, he's uh, left the course, flown through the air, somehow has absolutely nailed the landing. Despite being out of control and... Uh, well, Jamie Stanton will be more than happy to be uninjured from that. He's got away slightly lightly. Greg Shornstein. 1, 37, 38, ticking through. Shornstein from Canada. Oh, getting wide. Really having to correct himself. In the final few gates, he'll still lead, 147.92. And uh, Shornstein just getting a little bit bent and out of shape towards the end, but uh, managed to rescue it quite neatly to take the lead. Shornstein will be followed by Australia's Mitch Gawley in a moment. 26-year-old Australian should be next. There he is. It's Gawley just uh, being held. I think there's a repair needed for the destroyed gate from Jamie Stanton. So Sean Steen with the lead. Gawley just focusing on the run in front of him. Away he goes then. A leader by example. Rich Gawley. I mean, for somebody like John T. O'Callaghan to have Mitch Gawley around must be tremendous to be able to pick his brains and ask for assistance or even just a, a shoulder when uh, things aren't going your way. Rich Gawley could be that as much an excellent individual as he is a skier 
Sean Stein's time is what Mitch Gawley wants to get somewhere near. Clattered that red gate a moment ago. Oh, and just getting wide. He had that problem in Kranskogora in the final few gates, did Mitch Gawley, but uh, he's rescued it. There's the smile. A bit of a veil is the smile. I'm sure he would have wanted to have been a bit quicker. Now, Robin Koosh, one of his best performances to date on the World Cup this morning, I felt. Young Koosh, now the challenge of getting back in front of Gawley. He had two tenths of a second on the Australian this morning. Needs to keep that and hopefully extend if he can. See Jamie Stanton coming down in the background. He's slipped behind. 0.46. Mitchell Gawley continues to lead. And Robin Koosh shows us his frustration. Well, Gawley perhaps thought he might not stand there too long. And he's top for now. This is Thomas Walsh. Walsh having a, a battle as we join him live. That was him coming out of the start gate. This is him very much live in action. Sliding through this section. In a few moments he'll start the drop down. That's where it gets all important. Walsh then into this right-hander. It caused Gawley a problem. Oh, it's not caused Walsh too many. 0 0.71 inside for two Gawley's time. Well, seems happy enough. Thomas Walsh, 17-year-old Santa Ricivari now. Finland's only skier in this. Driving into this right then left and he's got to keep that momentum going that he's got so far. But his factor time doesn't get altered too much. 97.39. And as Kiri starts the drop for the line, he's looking very good. 146.40 for the young Finn. <laughs> A nonchalant wobble of the head. It will do for now. How many will it hold off? Martin France, Braden Luscombe. Alex Grimont, Thomas Friel, Marcus Salka and Theo Hner all to come. We had quicker times than Kivari this morning. This is Braden Luscombe. Luscombe. Long hair coming out of the back of his protective helmet. Again, another of our single leg skiers just come using those outriggers to just give him a little bit of an extra balance when he needs it. Oh, he's having to jump through the air and crossing the line. 145 96. Well, a little loose towards the end. Let's come taking gambles. There's a shake of the head. He knows. He knows that could have gone very wrong. But Luscombe leads. Martin France next up. Doesn't have the use of either pole, does Martin France. 
33 year old Slovakian. It's a bit of a DJ in his spare time as well. He's already competed at two winter games. Hasn't managed to medal at either of those. And he's behind 146.28. Immediately shows his frustration, does Martin France. Luscombe was getting ready to leave the winner's box and he's just raised an eyebrow. So uh, Baden Luscombe stays where he is. Now this is Alexis Rumon. Rumon. Just the use of the left pole, the left arm dominant. Thomas Field, Salka and Rimmer to come. So Guimont has to put himself top to stand a chance really of podiuming. Luscombe needs mistakes from three or four through the line. 0.86 the difference. So Alexis Guimont is the new leader, 145-10. Now, Thomas Field, bid number 56. Field, third quickest this morning. Only Salka sandwich between Field and Gimur as the Swiss double act tried to give the locals something to really cheer about. Field. Just 31. Chasing down. 145 he wants. He's only got a miss down. Guimond will finish on the podium. Thiel is 0.96 behind. Just a, a look of shock and a shake of the head. He knew something wasn't right. And Guimond continues to lead. Two to come that should be able to make a change here. Marcus Salka knows all about World Cup success. Overall winner. The 26-year-old. This is his best World Cup this season so far. Is he returning to some sort of form? Salka. Towards the line. Oh, point 31. Guimont displaced. Salka gets top, and it's now about hanging on. Theo Rimmer was so close on both days in Kranskagura. Can he put it right here? Can he get down quickest of anybody else? Or is it more heartbreak for Teo? Mm -hmm. 144.79. Clock at the bottom right. That's what we're paying attention to. Rimeur looking comfortable. No real mistakes from here on in. 144. This is easy. What a run that is. Theo Rimeur. 3.39 seconds quicker. And he crashes through the advertising boards. But he won't care. And he doesn't look. Well, Theo Rimeur bursting through the line. In a brilliant time, 141-40. What a performance from the 21-year-old. 
This is Alexander Alyabayev. Alyabayev. Just a bit of a wobble there. Went to 52 67 this morning. Are you buying F148 98 all together? Not in vert. Perch, one of our uh, winners from the last few legs of the World Cups. And uh, don't forget they've been doing slalom and giant slalom in the last few destinations. So we return to uh, different action in Tinez. We were uh, meant, obviously, to go to San Maritz in the opening leg. And that, uh, of course, it was called off due to the weather. Now, there is a potential that the weather might cause havoc here in the next few days as well. So, we'll keep you up to speed with that. Hirgme is very, very happy at the bottom of the run. This is an understatement. It really is. That's uh, Michael Brugge. Sorry, that's uh, Nico Pucjantic, so I say. Got a little bit ahead of myself with uh, Michael Brugge. Nico Pucjantic. Eight point three six seconds back. Piancic. A wave and a smile. So just a short delay here. Thomas Mulder, it is. Another of our single leg skiers, Mulder. Again, the use of those Outriggers for the 23 year old from Rotterdam. Broke a leg in November 2016. His uh, Mulder's accident meant uh, he missed most of last season. So uh, he is very much someone trying to come back to the sort of form that he had. He went to the World Champs in both 2013 and 15. Uh, no such joy in 2017. This is... Uh, James Whitley. With his time this morning, 
Again, just 20 years old. It's in uh, Eastbourne. Loves watching a bit of Formula One, does James? So uh, no surprise that speed is a, a key thing in his life. And he's trying to get faster and faster as the World Cup continues on. 151. 62. Andreas Kurtz. Number 72 for Andreas. He went... 53.87 this morning. On 51.99. That's uh, Andreas Kurtz's first day. Done and dusted. Michael Brugge up next. This is uh, Brugge coming out of the start gate. Look at coming through the one thirty second mark. goes Brugge 10 33 behind and uh, well you don't need to be able to lip read or look at body language in a professional manner to know that Brugge is not happy with that at all so Alexi McCushion another of our uh, MPA athletes and uh, are you, uh, wondering where Bugayev is, he went out. Surprise this morning. Bugayev making a mistake. And, uh, not joining us for the rest of the run, for the second run at least. So, uh, Kushin. <laughs> Christian's time, 152.87. See, Alexa, just the use of the right arm. Well, it. Got to stay there, mate. It's all part and parcel of winning. Next up, then. Aaron Lindstrom, and uh, well, as he comes around this corner, he's clearly missing a ski. Oh, not happy, Lindstrom. Just trying to get to a part of the course where he's uh, safe enough to stand at the side, and uh, I'm sure somebody will return the aforementioned ski in a moment. Just comes over the brow of that hill, and when he does appear, He's missing his right ski. Tucking on and getting on with it. This is uh, Kutuka Koeke. Okay. 
time this morning. 55.77. 35-year-old from Okaya. An office worker by day. Not today, clearly. Do the line. 155.92 for Goiki. Disappointed skiers this afternoon. Now, Divide Bendotti. We'll, uh, follow Julian Ernst and Goi Takashi. And Benotti will be followed by Matt Short. So just four left to come, including Ernst. Come in, Ernst be taking out some of the poles. He's got the, the line. It's the speed that now he needs to work with. Towards the finish line. 156.50. So this is uh, Kohei Takahashi. 17. Uh, many youngsters competing, all varying levels and varying impairments throughout the course of this World Cup. And, uh, but just because another 17-year-old is ahead of you when you're 17 doesn't mean that come 23, 25, 38, that will still be the same situation. People learn and gain strength and experience at different speeds. Whilst they're doing that, they come down these mountains at different speeds. Teo despite being young, is our leader. And that time from Takahashi is some 16.74 seconds back from our leader. Bendotti is out on the course. Matt Short will follow shortly. This is Bendotti at the start a few moments ago. Dotti. For our single leg skiers. 23 year old. He's pleased his punch to represent Italy at the World Championships at the beginning of last year. Dotti here, the penultimate athlete to go in the men's standing event. Just slowing through the final section, 157.74. And the Italian completes his day one. Matt Short. Mentioned earlier, the 27-year-old lives in London, works for the uh, lawyer and associate at Allen and Overy, here at the law firm based in London. He's also uh, the founding trustee of the Ewing's Sarcoma Research Trust, a charity that raises funds for research into the rare form of cancer, Ewing's Sarcoma. He's also got a, a level two coaching badge from the uh, English Football Association as well. So he's a keen sports person. And a uh, big shout from Matt as he comes through the line. Oh, he's enjoyed that. It's another run out for Matt Short. The sun continues to shine at the top of the resort and Theo Rimmer continues to shine in the men's standing event. He's won this one. 
It's one of a few victories he's now got here in the World Cup this season. And he takes the title on day one. In the men's standing, giant slalom. And sitting event up next, then the final event of the day here on day one. A few go out a little bit earlier. Taiki Mori went first this morning and his time stood for a long, long time right to the end. 50.11. He was in front of Kirker, Pedersen, Kampstur. So uh, we'll see. Taiki Mori right about the middle of this event. There'll be a fair few to come after him. They'll be looking to improve on what they did. A little earlier but for uh, a certain section it will be about trying to catch Maury and his time from this morning Since, uh, Igor Sarkowski from Poland a winner already on the World Cup circuit surprise maybe on Day one in Kranzlagora. But Sikorsky will be aiming for victory or at least a podium place again here. But uh, he's got a long way to come back from this morning's performance for him. So, uh, this one, getting a bit of practice out on the mountain, getting a feel for it. Tyler Walker, by the way, didn't start his run this morning and I mentioned that might have been because he was still feeling the effects maybe from the mammoth uh, crash he had in Kanska Gordo. He took it full on the face at one point. A, uh, a real big uh, smash for Walker who's no stranger to getting bent up and out of shape but uh, he was the only non-starter. Sikorsky finishes his run Kir Kano second up and uh, Kano bib number 99 was uh, chasing down that time from Sikorsky the official time 148.65 for Sikorsky so yeah there you go anybody that was uh, wondering where Tyler Walker was this morning he said he's fine but he just need a little bit more time to get back in I think uh, after that smash he's more than entitled Keanu getting a little light with three to go but uh, comes across the line and he's behind well he's dropped some time was 14th quickest this morning he had 0.2 of an advantage over Igor Sikorsky this morning he's lost that completely and uh, fallen behind the Polish gear. So, Thomas Norte. Norte. 13th this morning. Can he find something quick? 33 year old to catapult him up the leaderboard and stay there 148.65 is the first challenge are you better are you quicker than Igor Sikorsky do you know what Sikorsky's second run is proving to be very good Nolte has struggled to get near it as well he goes behind Igor Sikorsky Thomas 
This is uh, this is Crater number 86. 32 year old German skier. Competed in Sochi, just the one result from there. Four DNFs in varying events and the eighth place finish in the downhill. His best to date. Can Crater find some form towards the back end of the World Cup? He's outside of Sikorsky's time. I'm getting used to saying that. Well, Sikorsky at the moment looking like taking himself up from 15th. Can he break top 10? That'd be an achievement. This is uh, Niels de Langen. De Langen. Just 19. Again, the Dutch really do have a couple of good youngsters they can call upon in the sit ski event. De Langen is indeed one of those. 148.65. Sikorsky. Everybody's struggling. Igor Sikorsky stays where he is. Langen in third. Well, nobody getting near Sikorsky's run. 55-40. I did say that large parts of this were fairly tight in the men's standing and the men's sitting events. Francois from France. Frédéric picked up a victory during this World Cup so far. Bib 100. A 40 year old. Heading towards a second Paralympic Winter Games. Best place finish of fifth on two occasions out in Sochi. His first challenge here with that double ski mono ski is to get past 148.65 and he's the first to do so. 111 the difference. Finally somebody ousts Igor Sikorsky from the winners area. Been there a while. Probably to his surprise as much as anybody else's, but now Marcus Quatterhofer from Austria. Quatterhofer. Oh, he's obviously come to a a mishap somewhere. He was fairly slow through that section, so this may uh, be difficult for him. To regain that speed, he looked very slow coming out of that section. 147.54. He's not even into the final drop yet. This could have gone better for Kratterhofer. As he comes down, he's looking at 149s. 149.72. So uh, Kratterhofer, yeah, slams the outrigger down. He knows that one area just virtually came to a standstill. And uh, Kratterhofer... With 149, it's not what he wanted. Josh Elliott. Thirty-six year old from Edmonds, originally. Uh, lives in San Diego with Samantha up towards the line. He's going to take the lead. 0.78 for now. Josh Elliott jumps to the top. Josh Elliott leads. Line Di Silvestro is next. Six more until we have our leader. So, uh, Di Silvestro 
to try and go ahead of Josh Elliott. Then you just have to start hoping and praying if that's your persuasion. The Silvestro throwing himself. Twenty-one year old from uh, Ini Chin. One forty-six seventy-six. He'll do it. One forty-six twenty-two. Italy lead with Rene Di Silvestro. Well, he shredded his way through. Oh, and a, was that an early mistake? From Kurt Oatway? Coach behind him seemed to raise his arms. Did Oatway make a mistake there? Well, if he did, can he make up for it? Three year old Kurt. Studied geology. That's higher education. It's clever with me because I don't even know what that means. Looking at a second. Oh, games! He's got himself sideways here. Oatways turned back, and Di Silvestro will stay where he is. 150. Well. Potentially a mistake at the beginning, definitely a mistake at the end. And he is furious. Oh, he just goes from underneath him. You'd have to ask Kurt Oatway, because there's nothing I can tell you there. He seems okay, and it just falls from underneath him. So, uh, Di Silvestro. Oatway has failed to take the lead. Christoph Kunz up next. He's moving. 35-year-old. A banker. What's he saved up from his first run? In energy terms, 146.22. He's inside, 145.81. And Christoph Kunz leads. Kampscher, Pedersen, Kirker and Mori to come. Before we say goodbye to day one, we are by no means sure of who's taking gold in this sitting event. Here's the world champion. Had a, what he would consider an awful start to the World Cup campaign. Has looked better. Kampschler, just 18, we'll need to put something brilliant in here, Kampschler crosses the line, I'll try and bring you the time in just a second, Christoph Kunz is his 145, Eighty-two. We'll bring you your own campsures in a moment. There's a little issue with the timing system, so uh, a nervy wait for everybody. And there'll be a slight delay here. That's how the amateurs do it. That's how I do it. Badly. You know these people, do report them. But they are safe, they're just struggling down a mountain at the moment. Well, this is Christoph Kunz, he sat in the leaders area, but the problem is the timing system has registered him as having an overall time of 59 seconds and 52. And of course, that isn't right. So I can't bring you campsters because that's been registered at 18 minutes and 11. So that's definitely not right. So we, uh, we have to wait for the timing system to kick in. Pedersen can run, and he, and he is doing. So, Pedersen will attack the time by Kunz, but I'd love to know what Kampschurz was. 
Pedersen against the clock. Christoph Kunz was 145. Pedersen has been so quick this season. You don't get the leader's bid by accident. He has been superb. The 18-year-old from Bergen has really surprised a few here. Can he get inside Kunz? Oh, yes, he can. 143.97. Pedersen well inside. Now, have they rectified Kampschers? Not yet, I'm afraid. Andrew Kirker. Well, technology can sometimes add to the drama. They don't get it fixed soon. We might need those last runners just to solve it all. Kirker. It's just time. I think it was 145. Pedersen's, he's quicker, but isn't coming up on the system. And, well, we have to wait. Through the line, Pedersen's 143.97. He has 144.35 from Kirker. So Pedersen leads. And here is the man that led after the first run this morning. So nice and settled. Pedersen from Kampstra, from Kirker. Just 0.31 Pedersen was in front of Kampstra. That's how close it was. Now, can Taiki Mori repeat his superb run from this morning? The 37-year-old had all of the youngsters beat in his first run. Can he do it again? Oh, got a little bit in the air, but has dealt with it like the experienced skier he is. Three-time Winter Paralympian, Taiki Mori for 143.97. Oh, is that exactly the same? Well, I'll wait for the confirmed time, but it looks as if Mori has come up with exactly the same as Pedersen. Do we have a joint winner? Well, I'll wait for the official results to come up on the screen next to me, but it would appear we have a tie. Absolutely. Taiki Mori and Jesper Pedersen, 143.97. The both of them will top the podium. Camp Stur will have to settle for third, but there's been no settling. The battle between Mori and Pedersen. Fantastic results in the sitting category. This is Mark Sawyer from Australia. Try and bring you Mark's time in a minute. Shouts hello. That's handy. So, uh, just having another issue with our timing, so we'll try and come back to that in a second. Mark uh, Sawyer's time not up on our screen. This is uh, Kenji Natsumi. Natsumi, bib number 93. Forty-four years old is uh, Kenji now. Oh, uh, Pedersen's time and Maury's time. One forty-three ninety-seven. Natsumi coming through some seven and a bit seconds further back.
to me 151 three zero and yet just just a pause here because Mark Sawyer's time is missing altogether so they are having a few issues but, uh, they are trying to resolve them as quickly as possible so uh, please do bear with us Some, uh, holiday makers It's a huge resort, as we say, the, uh, the edge of the four valleys here. The Sonnes, you can see all the advertising hoarding there. The Sonnes, four valleys. Now, getting ready for Johan Tabrelli, who's uh, having his suspension system very much tested out by his coach. Uh, Johan Came and found me earlier and had a chat. It's nice to uh, get some feedback from him. And this is uh, 30, 37 year old Taigi Mori. Yeah, current joint leader with Jesper Pedersen. And just being kept warm and in the conditions. They're just trying to make sure that uh, the uh, Rhino ski is in perfect shape. The coach is out on the mountain as well, just trying to keep themselves warm. Mark Sawyer, 151.21. It's the allotted time. There you go. It's the first time we've had two sat in the winner's box so far. They're uh, posing for pictures as much as our cameras are looking at them as well. But uh, yes, but Pedersen and Daiki Mori not to be separated. And uh, that should be the way it finishes. A lot of these last few runners now shouldn't be able to affect the time. I was talking to Johan about the artwork. He said it's not uh, anything to do with uh, the team it's his, his own personal stuff he uh, he saw it he loved it and uh, the, oh well he won't look back at that and see that and love it that's uh, a mistake from uh, Johan Tabele and uh, he is uh, seemingly okay it's alright looking at the outrigger but uh, Just there. Leaves it inside the gate. And that sends him spiralling down the mountain. The Frenchman. Is uh, up. And that's just de-snowing himself. One of the coaches is heading down and uh, giving him a few words of encouragement but uh, sure Tabule will be okay again we just pause and, uh, Pedersen and thank you Mori being congratulated once again Johan Tabale making his way from the rug. Don't forget, at Parrot Alpine is where you need to be for the exclusive content that we have for you. Interviews later on, a highlights package as well, all the way from the actual live coverage that we have for you every day of competition during the 2018 World Cup. But at Parrot Alpine on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, Snapchat as well. So action back underway after Tabule's collision with the gate. This is uh, Simon Valda. Uh, 
30 year old Austrian based in uh, a place called Volders which is near Innsbruck studied sport science a skier prior to his accident to him it made sense to get back out and do something he enjoyed anyway and that uh, Valna who uh, only suffered his accident back in 2011 here he is seven years later competing with the world's best uh, Valna comes through the line and completes his run Enrique Plante, Martina's only athlete on the circuit. But he's here, he's based. It's Plante. Comes uh, originally from a place called Nukian. Plante finishes his second run in 152.70. Aiming to get to uh, Pyeongchang, a second Winter Games on the horizon for the Argentine, who uh, competed in the giant slalom in Sochi. Came as a run out of the World Championships in Tadavricio as well. This is uh, Han Sang Min of Korea. Han uh, Sang Min just uh, nods the head to the side. I'm sure he's, uh, I'm sure he's ecstatic about that. Ali Velasquez. Velasquez uh, entertaining in his run. This morning, Marcel, the coach, I'm sure, looking on and studying everything. Ali, originally born in Cancun. And Ali going down to finish his second run as well. So, uh, well, he's getting consistency, he's finishing runs, and that's all that I'm sure the coach will be asking for now. Push yourself by all means. And the uh, guys at the bottom being given some coats. I'm not sure that's Taiki's size. Bjorn Bernge, the uh, orange helmet. Orange protective wear on either arm as well for the German sit skier. Your Benke. Forty-three, well and truly gone, but into the final few gates he comes. Then, dangerously left his right outrigger dangling perilously close to that blue gate. But uh, Benge finishes the run. Well, considering we've had some 
very dramatic exits as DNS go in uh, recent weeks of this World Cup. We've been uh, blessed to have no real accidents here on day one in Vesson as the athletes really were looking forward to getting onto some softer conditions and they've found it here in Switzerland. And uh, Danilo Rossi is the next one out. We've had uh, Tabole crashing out, of course, in the second round. Only Tyler Walker didn't start the first round. But certainly nowhere near the levels of uh, crashing out here in Vesunas. So, uh, good news for the athletes. And again, Mori and Pedersen looking on. They have to wait in the winner's area for everybody to have been. This is Takeshi Suzuki. Suzuki. Love to emulate what uh, Mori is doing at the moment, but uh, no such joy for him. Twenty-nine year old from Fukushima. Into the final two gates then. And that's Suzuki. 156-43. That's 12-46. The difference between him and his compatriot Mori. Tino Sokolovic then. Twenty-nine year old from Zagreb. Been competing since he was eighteen. That's when he took up the sport anyway. He uh, dropped onto the circuit for Croatia in two thousand and eight, so uh, 10 years he's been having a go at this and he is a, a big hope for some success in Pyeongchang. The giant slalom has been proving difficult for him but he's had some much better performances in the slalom event. So uh, the two-time Paralympian aiming to make it three. And, uh, this is Manuel Cioletto. Cioletto. His second run of the day. It's the first time we've seen Micheletto on the circuit. Manuel. 30 years of age. So, you know, involved in an accident in 2012, which uh, left him with his impairment. He used to play rugby for uh, Castelli in Italy. Rugby Union, that is. It was his hometown club. And, uh, here he is. You can see how broad he is. You can imagine him as a, as a rugby player, can't you? Here he is competing now. That's a sit skier. Now, Micha Vefla. Big one, one, two. Went 57 36 this morning. Vefla. Want to try and rise up the standings. Second to last this morning. Can he improve his position? I'm sure that will be the aim. 158.98. 15 seconds exactly behind the leaders. 158.98 will mean that he won't improve his position. And, uh, it will depend on what our last athlete does. Uh, a return. For Lee Chi Wong, who uh, 
fell awkwardly in Zagreb. And, uh, missed out on Klaus Kagore. Uh, he said it wasn't too bad in the end. He had to go off and get a scan in Zagreb, but uh, here he is, so everything hopefully okay. I'm sure he'll be feeling it still. It was only some seven or eight days ago. Uh, Wong heading towards the line our final athlete crossing the line in 2.03.06 so uh, work to do for Li Chiwon so the official results there you go that's what we were getting excited about a little bit earlier on uh, 1.43.97 Bang on for the pair of them. Pedersen set the time. Taikimori equaled it. Well, it was uh, excitement throughout that men's sitting event. Camp Schur, the world champion, settles for third this occasion. He's certainly starting to pick up his form and his speed. Good performances from Andrew Kirker, Christoph Kunz. Uh, René Di Silvestro in the top ten as well as François Elliott, Sikorsky and Kreiter. So, uh, rest of the men's sitting standings as they come through. Now, only Johan Tabolet, as we mentioned, he and the artwork failing to finish here on day number one. Let's take a look back at some of the action from today's event. <laughs> Certainly has been an entertaining first day here in the Swiss mountains and we end by saying don't forget this three more three more days of action still to come here in Versonas the World Para Alpine Skiing World Cup continues more giant slalom tomorrow from myself Alan March and all of the team be back with you in the morning <laughs>